1,000 meters away. Well, here we go. Looks like Brazil, Portugal, Marcin Grabowski and Piotr Kuleta from, po from Poland. Sorry, I meant to say Poland. They look like they've uh, had some good results. Got a few, a few brothers in here. <laughs> yes. Yes, it must be quite rare to have that many, I guess. They're the, uh, the losses. It's the younger one who is the dominant one. So they tell me. <laughs> Father was also a great, uh, great champion as well. Circling around, waiting for them to be called into the, into the start line. So today we have the rest of the semi-finals coming up. In a few minutes, we're going to have the 2K4 1,000 meters. And then we're going to have finish off with the finale, which is the K4 women 4, 000, uh, 1, 500 meters. And then tomorrow again, it's, uh, it's finals day. So it's, uh, the action never stops here. Latvia have a good tradition in this distance. Well, three. just at the top, you could almost wave there, Lani. Just picture of yourself. <laughs> We've got three semi-finals in this, so... Timing doesn't matter. It's the first three through that goes. And it's always a good, friendly atmosphere. You have the teams mixing. We have the supporters. Russia's just next to... Uh, well, the French have actually pinched the place of the Russians over lunch. So I guess they've Russians like to have a nice long lunch and they'll be back cheering. They had a great start earlier. Still circling round. Elon de Souza Silva and Ize Creos dos Santos, who I mentioned this morning, he took the bronze medal. I don't think I've ever seen him race in the C1-200 before. He's going to have a big year next year because I guess they're going to use him as one of the poster boys. Yeah, indeed. This morning we saw uh, Sebastian Brendel beat Martin Fuchser by 17 thousandth of a second to take the gold medal. And he looked with the, the cameras, I don't know why, but they kept on him for about five minutes afterwards and he was, he was struggling for breath. Oh. Radonovic, obviously legends in the sport, Olympic champions. Not the same age, and uh, they've, been, they've, they've, they've been top dogs for quite a while now. They have the, the habit of, of coming off the radar, then coming back on again. Coming into the start buckets now. Interesting to see how the Brazilians go in lane number five. It's a combination that hasn't raced together internationally much. And then we have lane number four, which is the Piotr Kuleta and Marcin Grabowski, who's been uh, on the scene for many, many years. Little false start there. Was that actually a false start? Oh, I don't know. Well, <laughs> they all went, but... Really going on. This time they're safely away. This is the first of three semi-finals. And the Brazilians have put down their mark. Got a tremendous stroke rate. Wow, that is a good start. They're out the front. If you compare that to the Badanovic's in Lex Lane, it's double the stroke rate. They, they think they've done the 200 meter race again. They, but they're not going to be kept able to keep that up. Are they slaying no. off slowly? <laughs> See if they or if they do keep that keep up, this that is going to be an extraordinary performance. Lane number four, Poland keeping in their wake. But this is, a, this is a special start. Yeah. They look like they've brought that rate down a little bit now. Well, you had to, really. Yeah, you? there was no way they're going to sustain that. And uh, it 
contrast to that, the lane below them in lane number six is the Badanovic's that are striking probably half as often as they are. First uh, Very comfortable. split, see where we are. Well, as you can see on your screen, Brazil are taking it out from Poland. Latvia up there as well. Latvia lane number three. Yeah, the Belarusian brothers look very comfortable, just sitting back off the pace a little bit. Well, I don't know what the Brazilians were doing. Were they practicing their starts or were they... Uh, were they yeah, we just got a bit excited. <laughs> I might not. It is a world championship semi-final, but Poland have taken charge in this. In the last 100 meters, they've decided to set a solid pace. Lane number six, Belarus, the Badonovich brothers are still in there. It's Andrei and Alexander, they're still very much in there. As I said a minute ago, it's the first three that go through that qualify. They're coming up to 500 metres now. Well, the Brazilians are hang they're in there still. <laughs> OK, they've just had a bit of a breather to let the others catch up. Yeah. And they're going to go, go and go and put it down. But as we... It's coming to the second and third of the race. It's very much a case of Poland are putting down it with, but like you said, Brazil, they electrifying start. They backed off a bit and it looks like they're cruising now. With Latvia, the experienced uh, Dins and Pranks keeping up with the pace. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next uh, few hundred meters for a third place because that's particularly all that matters. Yeah. Brazil, Latvia. Brazilians look like they're slightly starting to come up again. The Brazilians? Yeah. We'll have to talk to them afterwards and find out what their tactics were. But it looks like Poland <laughs> are controlling the race at the moment, but the young guns from Brazil, Approaching difficult to see what they're going to do. 2.50 With to go now. Badonovic is coming back in lane number six. Well, the Brazilians coming up and they've decided to up the stroke work again, yeah. coming into the last 200 metres. The, brothers, the Belarusian brothers look like they're coming well, into third. The Brazilians are messing around, aren't they? They just decided to, uh, to accelerate away and the Bedonovichs look like they're going to take the third place with, unfortunately, the Latvians falling a little bit off the pace. 100 metres to go, you can see the white boys as opposed to the red ones. They are every 25 meters if you want to have a marker, but Brazil are really looking impressive here. They're wow. coming away the fastest first 100 meters, the fastest second 250, and they're just extending their lead now. Doing whatever they want to here. Let's see if they're tired at the end. Probably not. Wow, well done, great result. Second is going to be Poland, and third is the Belarusians who gain the final again so they can extend their extraordinary record. And for the C2 1000, as I might have mentioned a minute ago, it's the first six boats which are going through. They definitely had a good last 250. Brazilian guys. Well, it's ordinary, wasn't it, really? Because they, they backed off a little bit, and unless there's a, a tactic. It's a bit like there was Dijenko and Pogogan yesterday in their first heat of the, was the, phenomenal. the K2 500. <laughs> they apparently, I was speaking to them after, they said, right, okay, we, let's go for the first start, and we're going to back off. Yeah. Well, that's okay, this is fun. Okay, one and one hundred metres. This is all right. And they decided to win it. Well, there they are, superstar in the back. Well, 3.33 and they're uh, safely through to the final. Brazil, Poland and Belarus. Remember a couple of years ago when these must have been 19 and... Uh, just first season on the international was uh, was I uh, say, and he was a bit of a raw person coming in. You could already see at 18, 19, he was an extraordinary athlete. Yeah, I remember last year at, in Moscow, that was devastating. Well, it was, especially because he uh, talking about clearly when he pushed back for the line, and, and it's all drama because he thought he'd won it, then he thought he okay, I'll accept second. Then suddenly it was a case of uh, now out of the game. Well, Radon and Dvorak have been around quite a long time. They do make most finals. They're one of the only pairs that actually, no matter what the other is, they always wear 
the long socks, don't they? Yeah, I'm not sure. But they always they always have done, and they, and they, they looks like they're copying Marty Fuxer with his very smart pull. I don't know what it's called, pulling your hair up. <laughs> yeah. A few of them seem to got their hair tied up at the moment. But no, it's not even that long. Anyway, that's not for us to not for us to judge. I suppose the the Hungarians are going to make a little bit of noise because we have uh, Henrik Vazbanyani and Robert Mike, who were the world champions a couple of years ago. They dropped off a bit last season, but they they look very very impressive. They came they came out of nowhere. China and team in here, Uzbekistan, Vadim Menkov, who's been many times the the world champion in the C4 boat that won 2009, 10, and 11 world championships, and he's won a couple of uh, C1 1000s before. He's uh, Serik uh, Mirikov. Yeah, be careful when uh, Vadim Menkov wins because he lets out such a cry. It scares the people in the next pit. <laughs> and Matthew Bugnet uh, and Adrian Bauer are going for France. We also got we got uh, Sergei and Timothy from Yemelinov. Mikhail sitting out of this one now. Three brothers, all still very young. And in lane number nine, it's the Spaniards of Antonio Manuel Campos and Diego Romero. Okay, they look to have a good start, although the camera angle is very deceptive, I must admit. It's difficult to tell. Long way to go, four minutes of activity, but it looks like in showing at the moment it's is... Uh, well, he always used to go off start. fast in the C1. He perhaps he just told his partner that's just the way I do it. Uh, lane number five of well in the complete white boat is the Hungarians who normally like to dominate at the top of your picture in lane number two you can see Ukraine looking like the good start as well so it's the second semi-final of the C2 1000 men and Ukraine at the moment are taking it away Yep, the top three go through. Uzbekistan, Hungary are looking looking daunting there. You seem to see if the UK can keep it going. We saw Yuri Shaban, uh, Olympic champion, uh, uh, not make it through, unfortunately, in the C1-200. Didn't make his Olympic crater with Silver Held also missing out. And we saw Ino Zubenko from Ukraine, another Olympic uh, medalist, uh, also... Uh, not doing what she wants, I don't think. But yeah, the the Ukrainians here are pulling out a, a bit of a lead. It's all a fight for second and third place. Halfway, five worth. Czech Republic are up there now. Well, they they know how to pace a race. They they won, I think, a couple of years ago in the Czech Republic in, in a World Cup and it was like they'd won the Olympic girl, they were so happy. Yeah. Well, Yuri Vanduk and Andrei Rybachok from Ukraine are having holding on to their one length boat lead with the lane four, as you say, Radon Dvorak certainly pushing up. With Hungary, as we'd expect, I... Well, I guess most people are going to expect them to make a surge fairly soon. They normally do. Yeah, they're just sitting back up a bit. You can hear the Hungarian fans. Well, these are a crowd's favourite. They did dominate a couple of years ago. Expect them to make their move now, but it's quite special that Ukraine are still holding on to the lead with about 220 metres to go. So they're 1.72 as you see at the split. I'd expect this to be taken in a little bit. Yeah, a little bit of noise because France is still in the picture of where well. we have the French East waving their flags coming into the last 125 metres. Top of the screen is Ukraine. I think Ukraine are going to hold them off. Czech Republic and Hungary looks like they're going to take it. Very impressive performance here. Yeah, very impressive from Ukraine. I think they're going to be the top three. And the second and third breaks, the Czechs. And the Hungarians, they're really just, well, they're really putting in a bit they're of a finishing them. sprint, but there's, there's no need to do this. Uh, impressive victory for Ukraine. They're winning the 33, same as the, pre the previous semi-final. France 
just missing out, I believe, coming in fourth place. Well, that was pretty impressive. It was, wasn't it? Because they yeah. just they they, they, they did their own race out on the yeah. uh, on the outside. Just kept it going. Well, we're going to have a cracking final because there's some big names stepping up that have performed at the highest level before. This time, uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan with Menkov just running out of steam, unfortunately. Well, just showing you the confirmation of the result. Ukraine, Czech Republic and Hungary both go through. France just missing out. And this is full of place in the A final and the top six teams from the A final go through. Well, the cameras are looking at the Germans and that's uh, Peter Kretschmer, who's the Olympic champion with Michael Muller. They came together just before Duisburg last year, beating out Virgin Orch, who were the German favorites to take the actual position. We've got Canada next to them. They've done well in the Pan Am Games just recently. So. Well, they've got huge hearts, haven't they? They're, yeah. they're always in all the events. And it's uh, the younger Russell and uh, Gabrielle uh, Bush and Sevigny. Also, the Italians that are expected to do rather well. It's uh, Incogno and Santini. And of course, we have the champions uh, from Romania who also uh, are the no longer spring chickens. They're hoping to win their third gold medal in this event. I can say they're not that, they're not that old, but they're <laughs> compared to some of well, the, the others, fact, they the are. Fa the fact that they've already <laughs> won, and they got their very smart bit, you can always recognize their bit. Yeah. Making me feel old. <laughs> Well, they're off to a, a fast start as ever. You can see the Romanians because they have the Scorsese bait, which is the easiest bait to recognize in the fleet. Just slightly, this is going to be uh, potentially a really, really good close because we have uh, Russia lane number three with uh, Melanchiev and Pavukin. They've been around a long time again. We have lane number four with the Germans, uh, Kretschmer and Müller. Canada staying up there right at the moment, Romania and Italy. So it's right across the board. Early showers are the R Russians. Yeah, Italy doing well up there, taking the lead out. Well, Italy, uh, as we've done in a few other races, they always see the crowd like to see Italy winning at some point, so they always go out quickly. Italy leading now from the Russians. First three that go through, it's going to be a really tight, in my opinion, semi-final here. And I'm not sure it's going to be the same order they are in now. No, I think it might shuffle up a little bit. Germans looking ominous in lane number four, just keeping on the pace of the Russians. Canadians hanging in there as well. well the Canadians never give up, so we'll be expecting a big push in the last uh, few hundred meters with the the young old Romanians are uh, hopefully uh, still going to be pushing forward. Well, three in a line as they come to the half slow stage, but it's Italy who are going to keep the locals happy, taking the first position over the halfway stage, which actually counts for nothing. Russia, Germany, Canada. Well, the Russians and Germans seem to have just picked it up a little bit, I think. Yeah, but look out for, lay, for the Canadians lane five, Romanians to lane six. I don't think they've had the last word yet. No, I don't think so. 
Canadians making their way up to the front. So it's Germany taking it on a bit. Italy starting to find it difficult in the blue boat at the bottom of your picture. Germany, here we go. Yeah, Peter Kretschmer said he lost a bit of motivation at the beginning of last year. He'd done it with the uh, gold medal Olympics, and then uh, suddenly this year with his new younger partner, he suddenly found it and he's found the enthusiasm. They're coming back with uh, 225 meters to go. Coming through the 200 meters now. where we have a little bit of noise. It's Germany with half a length from Russia and Canada making it. I don't know what's happened to the Romanians. They're going to really have to be something special in the last 200 meters, or 150 meters to go now. So the Canadians are coming back up. But look at Romania. They're pushing for it. They are. Yeah, they left, left it, it too, too late. late I think. Not sure. Let's have to see the Russians look a bit Vulnerable at the top. Oh. Germany's going to take it. Canada's probably going to take second. 25 meters ahead, and it's still not over. Well, oh well. Wow. Romania, why did you do that? It's Germany yep. first, and Canada second, then Russia. Must question the tactics of Romania because it looked like they had a bit more in the tank. But uh, Germany, new pairing, been together now. It must be probably five months. They looked. Uh, that was pretty smooth. Looked smooth. And there's no there's no chance. It's only the first three, so you can't be you can be the fastest fourth ever, but you're not going to go through. Germany from Canada from Russia. Well, it's so exciting, Lani. It might make you want to take up canoeing. You give it a go. <laughs> sure you won't. And that's two. Of the so semi that's the third semi final, that one. Lane seven, eight, and nine. Please come to the bottom Lane Next seven, up is the men's K4. And why is this important in these worlds? Pardon? Why is it important in these worlds? Let me just quickly brief there. Germany take from Canada, take the Russians. They're the last three teams qualifying for the finals 